Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1980 Detroit Tigers season replay. Today is the last day of May, and we just won uh, two of three versus the Red Sox at home, and we head to Toronto, um, and we head to Toronto uh, with uh, a couple of major injuries. One is we lost Dave Stegman for the rest of the regular season. He may be available if we make it to the playoffs. Um, but that's a big if at this point because we have also lost our number two starting pitcher, Milt Wilcox, who will be out for one month. So we already have some serious starting pitcher pitching issues. Beyond Jack Morris, we really don't have anyone else that we can count on. Um, and I've already speculated uh, about making some trades uh, at the end of this month, which of course is today. So um, it's definitely going to happen. I'm not sure. I, I haven't really done my research yet to see what pitchers are available, uh, but I will be doing that after this game and um, see if we can pull a deal for an outfielder and for another starting pitcher. So um, also I want to mention, uh, as I did yes in yesterday's game, after today's game, I will be doing a special separate video that will highlight all of our league leaders. We'll go over the standings. Um, I just want to make a separate video for that so we don't make these videos too long. Okay, so um, that's the scoop. We have a one game lead over uh, the Orioles and a one and a half game lead over the Yankees. And uh, in today's matchup, we have um, Jack Billingham, who's two and four. And he's uh, has uh, no wins in his last three starts. Uh, but his last start, he pitched a one-hitter. The bullpen just completely blew it for him. And in the previous start to that one, he um, gave up zero earned runs. Uh, the, the, the defense gave up uh, uh, three errors, and he had uh, eight unearned runs in that game. So um, he's been hard luck uh, pitcher the last couple starts. So hopefully he can put one in the win column today. And he's going up against former Detroit Tiger uh, Dave Lamanchek, who's 3-0. So, okay, so let's get the game going. Uh, appreciate everyone following along. Like and subscribe if you're new. Uh, we also do uh, Brainiac Baseball Card Breaks, which um, we do every... Uh, Saturday and Sunday we do uh, new cards and then on Tuesdays we do time travel Tuesdays where we um, open up uh, boxes of cards from the uh, 80s and 90s and we just had a big one yesterday which was a lot of fun it was a 1991 uh, Topps Archives which was a um, reprint of the 1953 set so we pulled a couple uh, Mickey Mantles and some other really great Hall of Famers in that. So check that video out if you're uh, interested in that stuff. So uh, so Jack Billingham, as I mentioned, two and four, three eight nine ERA. So pretty decent. All of our bullpen is available. I did move Shot Sater out of our um, long relief role. I know I'm sorry, middle relief role, and moved him to the number two starting position for Wilcox since he has been very effective in relief and he has a high endurance, a high enough endurance that he could go at least five innings for now until we figure out what we need to do. And unfortunately that meant we had to bring, bring uh, Bob Stanley back up and his uh, 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 9.53 ERA, so not great. And here's a lineup. Whitaker had yesterday's game off, so he's back into the lineup today. And we've moved uh, Rick Peters into Stegman's role, uh, and he'll be batting ninth. Lynn Jones was was the uh, outfielder that got the call up. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. Play ball. Sweet Lou is going to be uh, leading off against uh, Dave Lemanchek, and uh, this is an exhibition exhibition stadium. Which uh, clearly this is the Sky Dome, or I think it's called the Rogers Center now. But um, Exhibition Stadium uh, was built in 1959 uh, to basically have fairs and concerts there. 
Sweet Lou gets a base hit. Um, they want to know if I want to go for two. I'm going to say no. So, yeah, it was built for fairs and for concerts. And um, the Toronto Argonauts uh, played there since uh, their inception. We're going to hit and run with Trammel. And Trammel's going to hit it to right field. It's going to be a line out, so it's going to be one down. So in 1974, um, that's when Toronto made a bid for a, a major league baseball team. And part of uh, that bid was to expand the current exhibition stadium. They was originally thought that uh, the San Francisco Giants would be uh, moving from uh, the Bay Area to Toronto. But in the end, it, they, they obviously ended up being a um, expansion team. As uh, Fisk is safe on an error by the catcher, a throwing error, so he goes to second, and Whitaker goes to third. So we got two runners in scoring position for Gary Hancock. So Hancock's going to ground it to second, and that'll be the end of the first inning. So a wasted opportunity there. Um, so yeah, Exhibition Stadium um, was famous for one major event in baseball, as uh, second, uh, third baseman Pat Rocket is getting the start at short. Uh, he's a, basically just been a, a bench guy. So just wanted to take a look at him real quick. So yeah, one major event happened uh, at Exhibition Stadium as Rocket flies out to right. I'm sure everyone knows that Randy Johnson uh, exploded that seagull, um, you know, uh, um, late in his career. But actually, the first seagull ever to be killed at a game was by Dave Winfield, who, um, after warming up in the outfield, went to throw the ball in and uh, hit a seagull in the head and killed it uh, as Barry Bunnell strikes out. And he was arrested after the game for, for killing the seagull. And uh, when uh, it was said that he did it on purpose, Billy Martin, the manager of the Yankees at the time, said uh, that, would be the that would have been the first time that Winfield hit the cutoff man all year. So, uh, you know, Billy Martin with his warped sense of humor. And uh, yeah, so that was the first time uh, a seagull had been killed at a major league game. So while I was telling that story, um, they got a little rally going here as um, uh, Otto Velez a single through the left side and that Mayberry singled up the middle scoring a run. So there is two down runners at first and second for Tiger Killer, Ernie Witt. He's going to pop it up on the infield, and uh, that'll be the third out. So we're down one nothing early as Lance Parrish comes up. And he's going to ground it to second for the first out. And here's Hebner playing third base today for us. He's going to rip it to right field for a base hit. And we're not going to risk a, uh, a, a getting thrown out at second when we're down a run. We're going to let JT swing away. Hopefully he won't hit into a double play. Nope, he's going to pop it up to short. So growing up in Michigan, oh, it's going to be an error on the shortstop. That's an error on uh, Adamaso Garcia. So first and second with one down for the number nine hitter, Rick Peters. And Peters is going to pop it up on the infield for the second out. So as I was saying, I grew up in, um, in Michigan. I never attended a game at Exhibition Stadium. Um, I have been to several games at uh, Rogers Center, back when it was called the Sky Dome, as Whitaker strikes out. So, um, yeah, the Sky Dome is a, it's, it's a fun stadium. There's a lot to do around the stadium if you've, if you've never been there before. Um, I've even, uh, as Bassetti gets a base hit to right, 
I've even uh, been fortunate enough to stay at the hotel within the uh, stadium itself as uh, our, uh, Garth Orge grounds the second, bringing up uh, Damasel Garcia, who made the error last inning. So yeah, I stayed at the hotel. I actually um, went to Toronto to go to a Toronto Maple Leafs game at the old Maple Leaf Garden the year that they were going to close it. And uh, I was supposed to stay at a Marriott, but um, they overbooked it. And so they gave us the option of staying at uh, the Sky Dome for the night. <laughs> so we stayed there overnight. The hockey match was the next day as Trammell grounds out the second here at the top of the third. So the night we arrived into town, we um, took advantage of the minibar and drank a lot of Canadian beer. And it ended up uh, the way our, if you take a look here, or like here, is where we were staying. And so we were basically throwing our beer bottles onto the field, which uh, I think was set up for the Toronto Argonauts at the time. I'm not really proud of that, but um, on the other hand, I did get it to about the 50 yard line, so they deserve a little bit of credit. So we head to the bottom of the third, down one nothing, and um, both teams are struggling to put any runs on the board. Braun strikes out for one out, and here's Barry Bunnell. But Bunnell grounds out to Trammell for two down, and here's Otto Valise. Who's going to line it to Kemp and left, and that's going to be a 1 2 3 inning for Billingham. So, yeah, for Billingham being our number five starting pitcher, he really has done, the, you know, a, a pretty good job. Uh, Hancock grounded to second there. Um, yeah, I couldn't ask for more from him. But uh, now that we're struggling with our number two and number three rotation spots. Um, we're going to need to make some uh, major changes. Uh, Wilcox will be back in a month, but um, we can't... Oh, man, that's three errors by the Blue Jays, and the second on Ernie Witt. As we have uh, runners at first and second now with one down, and this was the same position Thompson was in last inning. Let's see if he can uh, improve over his pop-out. Yeah, there we go. That is going to be a home run to left center field, 418 feet, and we've got a 3-0 uh, lead. So great job by Thompson as uh, Rick Peters comes up. He's going to walk, so we're going to put the pressure on and attempt to steal, although he has not been very good in his attempts, right? Yeah, he's 6 out of 10. So most major leaguers fall around 75%, and he's at 60%. So not great. So, um, okay, we're going to give him an opportunity to steal. And he is successful. So Peter steals second base. And here's a chance for Lou with uh, Peters in scoring position. And it's going to be grounded to the second baseman. Peters is going to advance to third. Let's see if Tram can get him in with two down. Nope, he's going to ground out to his shortstop counterpart. Oh my gosh! Another error. That's four errors. Two on Garcia and two on Ernie Witt. That is crazy. Four errors in four innings. Wow. Okay, so Trammell's at first. Let's keep it going. Let's have a Kemp get on base with a walk. There we go, first and second. And that's going to bring up Fisk, who's 0 for 5 against Dave Lemanchek. And Fisk is going to bloop it to uh, the right center gap, and it's going to be caught by the center fielder. So we do put a 4 spot on the board, and uh, we have a 4-1 lead. So uh, John Mayberry is 2 for 2 against Jack Billingham this season. And he walks Mayberry. That's not a good start to the inning after you, your team puts four runs on the board. Ernie Witt's going to hit it to center. That's going to be a base hit. 
and it's going to be first and third with nobody out and you can't see it at the moment but behind uh, this uh, billboard here it says uh, that Peters is a 64 fielding and that is not good I, I guess that's pretty obvious but um, a lot of balls will probably be dropping in in that air, uh, part of the outfield so um, I was thinking about pulling the infield in but I think we can turn to if Billingham can get a ground ball from Orge yeah, there we go grounder to short turn two, get out of it yes so we head to the top of the fifth Gary Hancock who does have a home run against Lomanchek this season Boom, there goes uh, a double into the gap. It'll be for three. Yes, Hancock does get a triple out of that. Bring it up Parrish with an easy RBI opportunity. He's going to ground it to the right side. That should get Hancock in, right? There we go. That's the fifth run on the board. And uh, that's going to bring up Hebner, who's also going to walk. And that's all for Lemanchek. They're going to bring in Greg Thayer who um, pitched for Minnesota in 78, which is probably why well, he's got the minor league twins cap on there. But uh, he's been in the majors in 1980 for uh, eight games in relief and uh, fairly ineffective. So let's see if we can keep the pressure on. Thompson, who had that three-run jack, is going to ground into a double play. So, um, through the top half of the fifth inning, the Tigers are up 5-1. to one, And uh, number nine hitter, Damaso Garcia, has got two errors. Trying to atone for that. He's going to fly out to left, and that's going to be the first out. Back to the top of the lineup with uh, Pat Rocket. And Rocket's going to get a base hit to left field. That's the, the sixth hit against... Um, Jack Billingham. I really would like to get Billingham through this inning without uh, any more uh, runs being put on the board. And then we might just go to the bullpen. So uh, Barry Bunnell betting 306 versus right handers. Two down. He's going to shoot it to first, and that'll be the third out. So when we come back, I, I'm going to have um, Billingham at least pitch to Velez, and then, uh, then we'll probably go to a lefty. Peters is going to ground it to third. And that'll be the first out. Back to the top of the lineup with Sweet Lou. Lou's going to ground it to second. That's going to be two down. And then Tram. It's going to fly out to center field. So, one, two, three inning for Thayer. And uh, here we are as Billingham's hovering around 80 pitches. Velez grounds it to Whitaker, and uh, that'll be the first out. Um, Mayberry definitely has Billingham's number, so he's done his job for today. That's, that's all I can ask of him. We're going to bring in uh, Capuzello, who I mentioned. Um, I called back up and sent Stanley down uh, earlier, but um, now we have both of them in the bullpen. Capuzello gets Mayberry to ground to second for two down, and here is Ernie Witt, who Capuzello walks. All right, well, I really want to get through this inning. Bossetti's only batting 143 versus lefties with no home runs, so I feel pretty good about that. And Bossetti does ground out to short. So Capuzello does his job. And we're in the top of the seventh. Here's Steve Kemp. Kemp is going to walk and run around first for Carlton Fisk. This is going to shoot it through the right side for a base hit. Will Kemp go to third? No, he'll stay at second. So, first and second. Nobody out. And here's Gary Hancock. 
Hancock grounds it to first. Is that going to be double play? Nope. Get the runner forced out at second. So now it's first and third for Parrish, who um, had a ground ball RBI his last time up. Let's see if he can pull off a sack fly, maybe. Nope, he's going to hit it to third. Will that be two? Oh, the fifth error! This time on the third baseman. Oh, that's Pat Rocket. That's, man, that's terrible. They almost have as many errors as hits. So, um, you know, I feel bad. If this was my team that was doing this, I'd be so pissed off right now. I'd probably flip over my desk. But, um, you know, since it's on the other team, I'm just going to go with it and uh, try to score as many runs as possible. As Hebner uh, drops it. Oh, no. It's, I thought it was going to fall in, but it's going to be caught for the second out, and we're not going to risk the third out at third, um, even though we have a 6-1 to one lead now. But that'll bring up JT who has a three-run um, home run earlier in the game. And he's going to have a long fly out to right. And that'll be the third out. So here we go, bottom of the seventh inning. We're going to take Capuzello out. And we're going to bring in Bob Stanley. I mean, he has just been horrible. But we do have a five-run lead. And... Um, I can't imagine they're going to get five off of them, but, uh, oh man, I thought Garth Orge was going to drop that in there against the wall, but um, Gary Hancock caught it, so that'll be the first out. Bringing up Damaso Garcia, who grounds it to Whitaker for two down. And back to Pat Rocket at the top of the lineup. He's going to walk, bringing up Steve Braun, batting only 159 versus righties. And he goes down swinging, so a 1-2-3 inning for Stanley. We're going to run him back out there, at least for the first two outs. So we're in the uh, top of the eighth. Rick Peters, who has not had a hit since uh, we put him in the starting role. But he has been walked twice, so we'll take that. Um, no, I can't hit and run up five runs. That's just not right, so... We're going to let Whitaker swing away. He's going to fly out to left. That'll be one down. So Tram, runner at first. Tram's going to ground it to Rocket at third. And they get the lead runner, Peters, at second. Trammell is safe at first base. And here's Kemp. Kemp go, uh, takes the third strike looking. So, um, pretty good relief pitching for Thayer. I think it's almost four innings of, of work for him. So, um, what we're going to do is we're going to take out Hancock. And we're going to get Lynn Jones into the game. He hasn't played since um, he was called up. So, we're going to give him a chance with his terrible defense out there in right. And uh, Barry Bunnell is going to ground it to short. It's going to be one down, so that's four straight, out, straight outs for uh, Mr. Stanley. Oh, I shouldn't have said anything. As uh, Velez gets a double into the gap between the two poor outfielders. So yeah, that'll be it for Stanley. We're going to bring in the lefty, Pat Underwood. You know, I'm going to bring in Hiller, actually. Hiller hasn't pitched as many innings. Um, and We need to keep our relief pitchers as fresh as possible considering our staff is starting to drop like flies. Mayberry grounds out to third. That's going to be two down. Here's Ernie Witt. And Witt goes down swinging. So Hiller gets the job done. And uh, yeah, 3.2 innings. 55 pitches for Thayer. As we head into the top of the ninth for Fisk. He's going to get a base hit to left. Oh no, I... Wow, I was way off on that. It was going to be a line out to left. I thought that was going to drop in. Clearly, it did not. Here's Lynn Jones. He takes a walk in his first at-bat. I guess it's not an at-bat. It's a plate appearance, officially. And that's going to bring up Parrish. Who gets a base hit to right. That's going to get Jones to third. Oh, nope. They want me to test him. Yeah, let's do it. Boom. Jones, safe at third. First and third. 
Thayer is tired. Hebner with uh, one out. First and third is going to get a base hit to center. Uh, we're definitely not going to risk uh, against Bunnell's arm. He has got a rifle out there. And that's going to be it for Thayer, who really, for the most part, did a pretty good job. Um, but he got tired and the manager left him in, so it's going to bring up uh, JT. And uh, he's not so good against lefties, betting 167, and that'll be a double play to end the inning. But we put another run on the board. We're going to take out uh, Hebner real quick. We're going to get Brookins in there defensively. Okay, and we're going to take Hiller out. And we're going to bring in mm, Weaver. Okay, so Bossetti leading off the ninth. That's going to be an infield hit. So, uh, yeah, I mean, never can get through the ninth. One, two, three, that's for sure. Orge is going to pop it up into a uh, short center field. It's going to be one down. Let's get a double play and finish this game off. Nope. Damaso Garcia is going to fly out to left. That's going to be two down. And here's the final batter, Pad Rocket. No! <laughs> Base hit to center. And uh, Bosetti only advances one bag. So, oh man, here's a lefty. Again, Braun does not hit righties well, so. And Weaver has been good against both lefties and righties. No, it's going to be a base hit to left field. Kemp is going to hold the runner at third. That's good. So base is loaded for Barry Bunnell. Let's just get him out. Let's go. That's going to be a line drive to the left. That is the ball game. So we're going to win that one 7-1. to one. Good game for our guys. Five errors for the Blue Jays. That's, that's pretty terrible. So as I mentioned, um, as the game is looking to see if there's any trade offers for us, um, my next video will be a League Leaders video. And um, with that League Leaders video, I'm also going to do a quick um, uh, preview for the draft, which comes up on the 4th. So I'll show you um, who's available in the draft, and um, we'll see if we, there's anybody uh, that's valuable for us to pick up for the future. And uh, look at this. There is a big trade out there between the Dodgers and the Twins. The Twinkies are sending uh, Ken Landro back to the Dodgers. He was originally a Dodger. And um, all-star catcher Butch Weiniger to the Dodgers. And in return, the Dodgers are sending Franklin Stubbs and Mickey Hatcher. So these are all really good players. Um, Stubbs is a rookie. Not a rookie. He's a single A ball in his first season. Mickey Hatcher... Uh, listed as a third baseman, and he was a third baseman, but he, I remember him pinch hitting and mostly playing DH and outfield. But um, yeah, it's pretty decent. At least they have someone to play third. And Ken Glandro, um, see, wearing his Dodgers helmet already, he's, he's packed and ready to go. Um, so, yeah, he is a really solid hitter. He batted 305 in 1979. So he's looking pretty strong. And then uh, Butch Weiniger, who was an all-star in 1977 for the Twins. And, um, man, that's too bad. He was actually a pretty solid catcher. He's only 24 years old. And uh, they're giving up on him. Uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, Eddie, Eddie Murray got injured for just only a week. And uh, Lee May retired at age 37. After a long career, 344 home runs. So that's impressive. All right, so we're going to pull up that box score and um, take a look at that. And otherwise, that'll be it for today. Um, check back uh, for the um, league leader. And uh, until then, everyone have a great night.